Hello, beautiful people. My name is Miranda Joy Ayim, and I am a two-time Olympian with Team Canada. Now, I've made a few videos about success and how we define success, but I'm really interested in the opposite of that, which is failure. Now, failure is a word that most of us avoid and don't like being associated with because it carries a lot of negative connotations. Even in a society where we're starting to understand the relation in between success and failure and how success is really not possible with those small steps of failure in between, we're still a little bit hesitant to talk about failure and the feelings of failure that go along with it especially in the world of high performance athletes that I'm a part of, the word failure isn't exactly commonplace, although the experience definitely is. Whether it's on a big scale or a small scale or somewhere in between, all of us experience failure and the feelings of failure on a consistent basis. Now I experience failure in the form of small mistakes or maybe even big mistakes made on a daily basis, but I also experience failure on a broader sense in a form of feeling like I don't measure up or feeling like I'm falling short of certain expectations put upon me. So that could be put upon me by myself or it could be put upon me by others. But I imagine that you can probably relate to that, whether it be the small mistakes, the big mistakes, or the general feeling of not feeling good enough or that you're lacking something. So why don't we talk about these feelings? Because there's a lot of layers of shame underneath it, I would guess, is why we don't want to approach that topic. Now, failure is more feeling than fact. We really feel it on a bodily level and that's why it's so real to us. It's the emotions that come along with the failure experience that make it so soul sucking. It has a depressive quality to it. So it has that shrinking, compressing, all encompassing essence that makes it seem like it's inescapable at times. So there's a physical feeling of failure alongside the emotional feeling of failure. It's not just in our mind with our thoughts and emotions, but it's in our very body. And we can see that in the shrinking and tightening and tensing up that happens when you, when you fail and that immediate reaction is like a, ah, you know, that clenching experience that you get. But let's talk about those thoughts running through our mind when we experience a situation that has potential for failure, or maybe it's a new or risky or unfamiliar situation. Now we have a script that plays on repeat in our mind over and over every time we approach a new situation. It takes what we've done in the past and what has happened in the past and projects it onto what could happen in the future. So now our previous failure, now adopted as a part of our identity, ends up projecting and dictating whether in fact we do succeed or not. When we fail, it's a confirmation of what we expected anyway. And when we succeed, it's like we narrowly escaped the inevitable. The tricky thing about failure is that it can feel like it's going to be that way and stay that way forever. It's like we're destined to live in this subpar space for eternity. Our own qualities, as well as those around us, start to take on a sense of permanence. I always make this mistake. He always does this. They always say that. It's always these permanent sounding words and thoughts that echo in our mind when we're reining in those feelings of failure. There's a refrain that starts to echo in our mind. It's like, well, this is the way things are now. And that sense of permanence then leads into a sense of powerlessness. We are almost disenfranchised from our own life because we feel that past events have a hold on present events. But that is not the truth. And staying in that mentality of giving away our agency magnifies the sense that everything is all out of our hands. All right, I just want to say that it is okay. It's okay to feel those feelings of failure. Accept it, feel it, digest it. But there is a way to pivot into a more helpful reaction when those feelings of failure do come knocking. 
one way to start evolving those reactions to failures and the feelings of failures is to find and create your own definition of success like i talk about in this video that i'll link up above it's talking about separating those different definitions of success and finding what is truly valuable to you it allows us to readjust some of those expectations that we feel as well as some of the power that we give to other people it also allows us to explore whether the feelings that we are feeling when we are confronted with failure are, are a result of the failure itself or some of the hype that we build up behind the scenes. Over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to release a few videos continuing to talk about that feeling of failure. So if you like this video, please consider subscribing or at least liking the video or leaving a comment down below. Uh, it lets me know that I'm not speaking into the void and also lets me know what you guys like, what you'd like to hear more of. So let me know what you guys think and in the meantime, continue cultivating your best you.